Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Father, we bless you today. We know you are with us. And even now you are taking away burdens and yokes are being destroyed, even as your truth is ministered. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for we see light in your truth and we receive it in our hearts. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Man, praise God. Now, I was, we are talking about fulfilling prophecies. So, I was sharing with you uh, about the children of Israel. And then, Moses came into Egypt. And God began to do all those plagues in Egypt. And I told you yesterday, he wasn't doing it to punish the Egyptians. He was doing it to show his own children who he is. You remember Moses you see, Moses was at the desert, at, at, the, at the burning bush now. And God, God said, hey, take off your shoes. Where you're standing is holy ground. He said, oh, okay. He obeyed. He took off his shoes. And then God began to speak. He said, how will I? These guys, I, I mean, Moses knew the Egyptians. He knew them. He knew. So he says, huh, these people... I'm going to meet. They are, not, they are not small people. So what am I going to present on the table? And God said, all right, drop your rod. He dropped it. He didn't know what to expect. The moment he dropped his rod, it turned to into a serpent. Like, Whoa. That's my rod. And God says, pick it up by the tail. Uh-huh. A snake. I should pick it up by the tail. <laughs> okay. He grabbed it. He held the stick. Whoa. Yeah. And God said, put your hand inside your bosom. He did it. Bring it out. <laughs> it, it was leprous. Put it back. Put it back. Bring it out. Whoa, restored. Why was God doing all that to Moses? Because of where he was going to. There is nothing God gets involved with that you don't see signs and wonders. Nothing. So, Moses got there and I told you yesterday, God was mindful of his children. He was going to, he wanted to, he was showing his children his mighty power. And that was how he was delivering them in their minds from the power and the bondage of the Egyptians. You see, because no matter what Moses tells them, hey, God is going to deliver you. And Pharaoh says, Okay, go. Now we are going. Hey, Moses, I hope we will not get to a place where we will see fire will cut the road into two. And then we cannot cross again. All those thoughts would have been in their minds. But God had to first deliver them from that bondage of fear that have held them bound for 400 years. He delivered them by showing his own mighty power. I'm telling you the truth. And this is one thing every child of God must learn. So, he finished with them. And then, then the Egyptians, they got to that point where they couldn't, they, they couldn't keep up. They surrendered. They said, <laughs> I, I you know, Pharaoh was always urging them on. Say, come on, this, this thing is, this is a small thing. Okay, okay. This one is kind of new. Hey, but well, well, we, 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 we can take a cue from it. You guys go do it. Uh, most Pharaoh, we can't. And then you know the story. Pharaoh's firstborn was taken. They, now, they had a God that restores life. Pharaoh took his child to that God. Nothing. Didn't come back. And he knew. 
Mm -mm. They said, you guys can go. And then they left. Now you know the story. Follow me now. Before they left, God said to them, go spoil the Egyptians. And how did they spoil them? He said, go tell them to give you everything they have. Go tell them you need their gold, you need their upper. Now, already God had terrified them so much that when they say, oh, I need gold, he said, please take, take, everything, take. So you see, all those plagues, apart from showing his children his power, he was also preparing for the spoiling of the Egyptians. Are you getting what I'm saying? So this to tell you that every sometimes you, you sit back and say, why is God delaying? And God told me he would give me this thing. But I don't know. And things are just slow. Hey, you don't know what God is taking care of for you. <clears throat> so that when he says go, everything will be set. And that's exactly what God did. Say, spoil the Egyptian. Hey, I need gold. Take. Uh, is this enough? Um, and I think I need one more. Take. I need clothes for my, for my daughter. Take. I need you. Take. Just, you guys just go. Anything that will make you go, just take it and go. They got to that point in Egypt. And then they left. Went into the wilderness. Number one, God was leading them by pillar of fire by night, pillar of cloud by day. So they, they, they were not trying to figure out their way. They were following God. They got to the Red Sea. You know the story. God parted the Red Sea. They crossed, walked on dry ground, and the, the Egyptians were lost in the Red Sea. Secondly, God began to feed them with manna every day, morning and evening. Think about it. Now, first of all, when God, when it was time for them to be delivered, God made them comfortable. I want you to get this now. He made them comfortable. They got into the wilderness. God began to feed them by himself. Now, it wouldn't have been difficult for God to lead them through one nation and then, hey, gather all your food. Give to these people. Yes, sir. They will gather their food and they will give to them. He could have done that. There, were, there are routes they would have taken that they will, they will be passing nation by nation. But God says, no, no, no. I don't want them to follow that. Let them follow the wilderness. And God was responsible for their feeding morning and evening. He was responsible. The Bible said their, 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 their shoes, their clothes did not grow, get old. Forty years, they were fed with manna. And at the end of the day, God got fed up with them. Why did they spend 40 years in the wilderness? Not because the journey was that long. No, sir. The journey wasn't that long. I'll tell you what was going on. They would stay on one spot for five years. Why? Because God was waiting for their mindset to change based on what they have experienced. But their mindset will not change. And God says, okay, let me take them to another environment and see. And he will take them to a different environment. And he will supply them. He, one time they said they want to eat meat. God said, okay, take meat. They ate meat supernaturally. And God was watching them to see. Yet, they couldn't change their mindset. They were still waiting for the day they would start farming again. They were still waiting for the day they would, they, they would remember Egypt. Oh, man, I farm in Egypt. You know that my cucumber farm? Man, ah, I would have just gone there to pluck one cucumber and eat. Ah, I'm tested. Ah, garlic. You know, that's what they were talking about. They, they, they were seeing the miracle power of God. Yet, they were waiting for the time they would get back to what they were used to. And God got tired of them one time and said, you know what? These guys, you will not enter into my rest. So eventually they got into the physical land, but they did not enter into the spiritual land. God had planned the two for them. They will get into a physical land, yeah. But yet that land, there was something about that land. There was something about the glory of that land. That, like God actually told them, it's not a land where you sow. It's a land that produces of its own self. 
Why? It's a land where angels walk for you. Why was God taking them to such a land? Because God says, I will make you a kingdom of priests. Every one of you are going to be priests to me. Now go study the life of a priest. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, why did I share this with you? It's the same thing with our born-again experience. We're talking about fulfilling prophecies. Now, you've been in bondage for many years. You were born in sin. You were born into this world. You've seen the acts of Satan. You've seen all these things. And those things hold you bound. And then now you come to Christ and you receive and believe the gospel. And many people don't actually enter into the life of Christ after they give their hearts to Christ. Because even many churches or pastors have not taught them right. So they think, now I'm born again. Okay, what do you need to stop smoking? Stop going for parties. Stop doing all those things you used to do before. That's all they know. But that's not how God drove the children of Israel. The way God drove the children, and this is the same way Jesus said, This sign shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. If they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and the sick will recover. Jesus said, This is how you will know those who have believed. It's not a prayer point. You don't pray for those signs. Oh, Father, give me the signs. No, 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 no. If you believe, you will see these signs. That's what Jesus said. So if I don't see those signs, what does it mean? You don't believe. You don't believe. But I believe you don't. You remember that man that came to Jesus? Do you believe? He says, I believe. You know what, Lord? You know what? Just help my unbelief. That's the prayer you should pray. Unbelief is not. I don't believe in Jesus Christ at all. I believe in Satan. That's not what unbelief is. Unbelief is like what Jesus said to Mary. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone. Now, Mary believed in Jesus Christ. You know what I mean? I mean, she knew Jesus. So when you tell her, do you believe in Jesus? Of course I believe. I believe he's a man of God. I believe he's a son of God. I, be, I believe him. Anything he tells me, I believe him. Now, Jesus says, your brother will rise again. Yeah, on the day of resurrection. No, 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 no. Today. <clears throat> she was the one that said, even now, I know anything you ask God, he will give you. And he says, okay, fine. So your brother will rise again. And then, uh, 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 uh. And then Jesus said, roll the stone away. No! By now, he's thinking. Didn't I just say that your brother will rise? Now, what's going on? That's exactly what many people go through. You're born again, yes. Who saved you? The power of God saved me powerfully. All right. God can meet your needs from today. Huh. 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 So, so what are you trying to say? I should not walk again. Hey, God can meet your needs. He can take care of your bills. Huh. Ah, please, please, please. Leave that. What's going on? On believe now that is what stops people from fulfilling prophecies in their life on belief they haven't submitted their minds the same thing with the children of Israel God was feeding you with manna morning and evening yet it was difficult for them to believe that God can take care of them for the rest of their life. That was what God wanted them to get. God wanted them to get to that point and say, hey, how do we feed? God feeds us. So why do we worry? See? And then they get to that, okay, Lord, what do you really want us? Because now we know that we're not hungry. We know that anything we need, you give to us. So what would you have us do? Hey. You have come to the place. Praise God. <laughs> Our time is up already. I hope you're getting blessed by these things I'm sharing with you. We're going to continue tomorrow. Have a wonderful day today. Bye-bye. <laughs>